Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Jolly Franchers YouTube channel. We are once again focusing on making a side scroller like Night in the Woods or Hollow Knight, or you could even apply this if you had a top down movement system to a game like Undertale or any number of JRPGs and the like. Last video, we did 2D side scroller movement running, jumping, and flipping the sprite if you're going left or right. This video, we will focus on interactables. Either that is running up to someone, pressing a button, and being in dialogue with them. And then at the end of the video, we will figure out how to have sort of an auto-interactable. So if you run up to a guard, or you try to run past a guard, they'll say, stop right there. You know, they can push you back. And we're going to do all of this with a visual scripting system that's free called Fungus, which I I've used before in my videos. You can do a whole bunch of things with Fungus. In this episode, you walk to the edge of the camera's view, and then I have the camera move to the next view. But you can also play sound effects or play an animation with these interactables. With this tutorial, the world is really your oyster, and if you figure out how to use Fungus, you can create a full fleshed out artistic game just using this video and the last video that I made. And I really hope you do, because I like these games. I hope you enjoy. Please like, subscribe, and comment on what else you would like help with. Say you want to see the top-down game. Say you're having trouble with something, something that I didn't fully explain in this video. Something of the like. And let's get into the video. Okay, we are back. And this week we are going to learn how to add like a person we can talk to. We are going to create interactables and dialogue and anything you might interact with in a side scroller. I promise that we can create it today. So if you didn't follow my last video and you have just a basic 2D movement system like this one here, this tutorial tutorial will probably work for you. So first things first, we want a person to talk to. You either need to make some art assets or go to freegameart.com or I, I forget exactly what it's called. But for now, I am going to drag in a person that I made and I'm going to name them Oscar. That's a necessary step. And right now we're not going to be able to do anything with Oscar. And that's what we need to make happen. Today we're going to be using something called Fungus. If you go to Window Asset Store and once you're in the Asset Store, you can search Fungus Games, download the package, and we will have just incredible amounts of tools. This is the one you're looking for. Click on it, press import, and you can go up here to tools, which you will find has appeared up here, fungus, and we want to create a flowchart window. And then you will see there's a flowchart window down here, but now it says no flowchart scene object select. So we will create a flowchart scene object. So you're going to go to fungus, create, and create a flowchart. You can also do that by creating the flowchart and then clicking on the flowchart game object that you've made and pressing open flowchart window. Now you can see we have something here called a block. And if we started the game, this block would run because it executes on event game started. Just to demonstrate what Fungus does, I'm gonna go down here, add a command which we will be using for our dialogue. I will add the say command. It is in the narrative tab. And I am just gonna type in, is this heaven? Because that's what I want our character to say as soon as they arrive in this strange world. Now let's play the scene and we will see the block run. Is this heaven? And so what we want to happen is we want to have a block run, like that dialogue block that we just ran, when we press the E key next to Oscar here. We want dialogue to be able to happen. So first things first, we're going to click on Oscar, go to the scene view up here instead of the game view. Make sure you can see Oscar. And then under Oscar's game object in the inspector window, we are going to press add component. And as you can see here, I practiced for this video and I typed in box because we are going to want a box collider 2D attached to Oscar. We are going to click on edit collider. If you want your character to be able to talk to Oscar from all the way over here, then you can make the collider that big. If you want them to talk to Oscar here, 
that's good. If you want them to be able to talk to Oscar while you're in midair jumping, you can make the collider that tall. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger than Oscar. Right now, if I didn't press is trigger, in fact, I'll just quickly show you what will happen. Oscar turns into a solid wall. It's very possible if you want like a guard blocking a door or something, this might be an effect that you want. I can also jump on top of Oscar, but because Oscar does not have the layer name ground, I cannot jump off of Oscar, although I am clicking the jump button. For now, I don't want that. I could attach another Box Collider 2D as well, have him be a solid object and a trigger, but for now, I just want him to be a trigger. If you add another Box Collider to him, that's roughly the shape of him. And now Oscar is both a trigger and a solid human being that you can't walk through. Secondly, we are going to want to add a script to Oscar. And this will be the interactable script that we will make that will apply to all interactables in our game. Say if I walk to the edge of the screen here and I wanted that to trigger the camera to move, I could also attach an interactable script to a Box Collider 2D trigger that I put right over here that would move the camera to the next area. But first we will create the interactable script. So go down here, still in the Oscar game object, we're gonna add component, we're gonna press new script, and we are going to type in interactable, create and add. It's having to think about this script that I just created. Voila, it is finally on Oscar. So we're gonna double click right here. If you double click, it'll open up in Visual Studio. If you watched my last video creating the player movement script, you will already have Visual Studio downloaded. But you can also go in the asset window and double click here as well, because your interactable script shows up in your assets. Here's our interactable script. We are not gonna need the void start or update method, so we're just gonna delete those. And we are going to want the string, the series of letters that make up the block name. So we are going to want to put in the block name of the fungus block that we want to activate when we click on our character in game. As you can see, the block name of this block is new block. And so on Oscar, if I go ahead and I save my interactable script that I just made by pressing Command S on Mac or Control S on PC, it's gonna think a moment while it updates the script. And as you can see, I can add a block name here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new block in my flowchart by double clicking or you know control clicking on a Mac, right clicking on PC. And I'm gonna call this new block Oscar. And so I'm going to copy this Command C or Control C on a PC. And I'm going to put that block name into here, Command V or Control V on PC. So now this game object with its trigger holds the block name Oscar. Now when we go up to it, still, it doesn't know what to do with it. That is where we're going to make a change to our player script. So click on your player, click on your movement script, and open it up in Visual Studio by double clicking. As you can see in here, I got a bit of a jump on this last time, but I added this public variable called key code. It's a list of key code and I called it interaction keys. You can see it if we go back to Unity and we go to the player component on our player object. There's interaction keys here. If you open it up, you can change the size of it. If I typed in two and pressed enter here, you can put any button you want to press and interact with the player. For me, it's E and tab. And so let's go back into our player script now that we have our keys that we want to press. And up here at the top, these are namespaces that we use in our script. Things like rigid body 2D, box collider 2D, those are part of the Unity engine namespace. We wouldn't be able to type those in and they wouldn't mean anything to the computer if we didn't put the namespace in. So just like that, we are going to go up here and type using fungus and then type a semicolon. And this will allow us to access fungus methods, fungus lingo, if you will. Down here under our interaction keys, I am just going to add a public flowchart. And now that I've added the fungus namespace, it understands when I type flowchart. See, it, it gives me information on it. 
And I'm going to name this flowchart variable flowchart. It demands a name, so make sure you type the name of your flowchart and how you will refer to your flowchart in your script. Another thing we are going to want to put up here is we're going to want a reference to whatever interactable object we are touching. The first one we're going to want is Oscar, but now that we've created an interactable class, as you can see, it remembers, just like it knows about the flowchart. It knows about our interactable class, and we will call this current interactable. The reason we're creating this is because we want this variable to change every time we enter into a new interactable trigger zone. When we enter into Oscar's interactable zone, we want the current interactable value to become Oscar's interactable. And when we go to the edge of the screen over here, we want the interactable to be edge of screen interactable, which we can create later. And how we want to do that is, remember that box collider 2D trigger that we created? We want to create a method it's going to be a private void on trigger enter 2D. Make sure you do the 2D one. It can get confused otherwise. Oh, it autofills. And the reason it autofills is because it passes in a value when you enter the trigger region. When you enter in to the Collider 2D, it tells you what collider you just went into. It tells you that, oh, you've just entered Oscar's interactable zone. So what we want to do here is we want to basically find the interactable script on the thing we just collided with, which here is called collision. And so the first thing we're going to do is create an interactable variable just to be used here in this onTriggerEnter 2D method. We're going to call it interactable, predictably. And then the way we're going to get the interactable script off the thing we collided with is we're going to use this collision variable. And we're going to say collision dot get component. We want to get the interactable component that's on the thing that we're colliding with. And so we are going to get component interactable off of this thing that we're colliding with as soon as we enter the trigger area. That's what that means. And then we want to save that value to this value that we can use in another method, this current interactable. First, we're going to say if the thing that we collided with, if interactable, if there is an interactable on this thing that we collided with, then we are going to set current interactable equal to the interactable. We're going to kind of want to do the same thing in reverse so that when we exit the trigger area, I'm literally just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. Command V. I'm going to change this to on trigger exit 2D. So when we exit Oscar's area, I, th I think what I'm going to do is when you exit collider 2D trigger, we are just going to set current interactable equal to null. There is no more interactable. We have exited the trigger area. So right now, we're, we're getting the interactable, but we're not doing anything with it. And what we want to do is we want to call the block in the flowchart, and we want to start dialogue or move the camera. Whatever we want to do, we want to execute the block in Fungus. So we are going to create another method called interact. It's going to be a private void called interact. And we want our curly braces, and I'll press enter to open it up. First things first, if there is no current interactable, then we are just going to return. We don't want to keep going. We don't want to interact. There's no current interactable. There's nothing to interact with. Stop interacting. Now, if there is an interactable, then for each key code, and we will name those key codes key code in interaction keys. So if you press either of the key codes in interaction keys, then this next thing in curly braces will happen. If input dot get key down, get key down returns true during the frame the user starts pressing down the key identified by the key key code enum parameter. So it just says, oh, true. You press the button. So if input.getKeyDown is 
either one of those key codes that we put in interaction keys at the beginning of this video. If you press your interaction key down, we are going to flowchart dot execute block. And the block that we will execute, as you can see here, it wants us to put the string of the block name in parentheses here. And we put the string of that block name on our current interactable dot block name and just put a semicolon over that. Okay, so let us go and see what we've just done. As you can see, there will be some problems with it. I'm gonna press Command S to save it. I'm gonna wait for Unity to compile the script we just made. Let's make Oscar say something so we can tell if it works or not. So go down here to the plus button, uh, go to narrative, and we'll add a say command. And Oscar's gonna say to us, hi bud. You're in heaven. So we know that if we see hi bud, you're in heaven, then we have done it right. Is this heaven? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna press the E button and it's, it's not working. <laughs> hey Zach, hey Zach, edit this out. <laughs> okay, so it's not working. So let's see what's happening. I'm going to minimize the game view and I'm gonna go to our player game object go to the player script and we should oh you know what's happening I did not put the flow chart into the player script this is a key aspect so I'm going to go ahead and put our flow chart into our player script here and now now it really should work Still not working. Okay, there is another reason why this isn't working yet. And it's because we created this method called interact, but then we didn't put it anywhere we can use it. We need to put it in update so that whenever you want to try to interact, you can press the button and try to interact. So that's why it's not working. You have to put your methods in update if you want to be able to use them. <laughs> from time to time. You know, I could call interact when I enter the trigger, but then when I'm not actively entering a trigger, I couldn't press the key and interact. This is something that has to go in something like update. So let's save it again. And this time it's really gonna happen. Is this heaven? Let's go ask Oscar. I press the E button. <gasps> Hi bud, I'm in heaven. Wow, we can talk to Oscar. Now, there are a few problems here. One, when we talk to Oscar, we can just absolutely walk away from him. And if our conversation was longer than two lines, he'd still be talking to me and I'd be all the way over here and I'd be able to interact with something else. And it could get really messy because then two blocks would be going at once. I'd be talking to him and talking to someone over here. So usually what you'd want to do is you want to make it so that you can't run, jump, or interact with anything else when you've started interacting with something. And then when you're done interacting, you would want to gain the ability to run and jump and interact with things again. The way we're going to do that is we are going to go back to our player script, and we are going to create a new bool. This can be a public bool for now called in dialog. And this will be a value that will help us know if we're in dialog or not, and therefore, should we be able to move. Here in our update, we are going to want to say if we are not in dialog, add curly braces, and I am going to cut and paste these things. Command X or Control X on PC. Command V or Control V on PC to paste them in these curly brackets. So if we're not in dialogue, we can run, flip sprite, jump, and interact. But if we're in dialogue, then we can't do any of that stuff because we have to finish our dialogue. The way we're going to tell if we are in dialogue is when we execute the block, we are going to set in dialog equal to the true. Uh, and this means we are going to need to find a way that when we are done executing our block, we need to tell our script that 
in dialogue is false and we can move and interact with other things again. I am going to go ahead and create a method. It's going to be a public void called exit. You know, I, I'll call it exit block. When we exit the block, we're going to want to do this. And what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to set in dialogue to false. Make sure and save your script or you will not be able to access this public method. And what we can do when we're done with our dialogue, we can actually make a new block. We're going to add a block and we're going to call it exit block. Plus the plus button down here and then we will go down to scripting invoke method. And we are going to call that exit block method that we just made. So drag in the player game object. We want to access the player script that we've just saved, and we want to call the exit block method. The way this works is after any of your interactables, like this Oscar interactable, you are going to want to go down to flow call, and we are going to call that exit block that we just made. You can just create one exit block and you can have all of your interactable blocks go to the exit block once they're through. And the effect this should have is that we will be completely still when we are talking to Oscar. And then when we are done talking to Oscar, yeah, I can't move, I can't jump until I finish talking. Let's create another interactable. And some interactables we want to happen automatically, right? Like you might have a moment where you try to cross by a guard and you can't cross by and you want the guard to say like, hold up, stop there. Or maybe you want to walk to the edge of the map and have the camera move and you want to have it automatically do that. It's still an interactable because you as the player are signaling to the game like I, I want to go over here where the camera doesn't follow me. And so we want to create a way to auto interact instead of having having to press a key and interact. So you can right click or go up here to the plus button and create empty, create an empty game object, which will be called the game object. And we're gonna call this move camera interactable. And we are going to add our component, our interactable script. I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And I'm also going to add the box collider 2D, make sure it's a trigger. And then I'm going to move this collider over. Let's see where our camera view is. I want this interactable right on the edge of our camera view so that it knows to shift the view. I'm gonna make it tall so we can't jump over it. it doesn't have to be this thick. For this interactable, we're going to need a block name. So let's go ahead and create a new block down here. I'm gonna right click, add block, and I'm gonna call this predictably move camera. I'm gonna copy, and I'm gonna put this block name right here by pasting it in. But we need to add an extra piece of information to all of our interactable scripts, which is are they auto interactable or not? So I'm just gonna create a public bool called auto interact. Double. Maybe I'll just do auto interact. Make sure you save your changes to your scripts or you can't use them. It'll take a moment to compile the changes that I made and I'm gonna click auto interact. Now right now that doesn't do anything because we haven't set our interact method of our player to account for that. Right now you have to press a button in order to interact. So I'm going to add another if statement right after this one. If you don't have a current interactable, then stop interacting. Otherwise, if current interactable dot auto interact equals true, then, and you might find this when you start writing your own scripts, when you see something repeated more than once, that means you probably wanna turn it into a separate method. So you can just call that method every time. And so your script doesn't turn huge and chunky and unreadable. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and I'm gonna create a private void called execute block. This is the syntax. And I am going to paste this stuff in there. Same stuff that was right there. And so now what I want to do when we press a button to interact is I want to call the execute block method that I just made. And if it's an auto interact, 
I want it to call the execute block method, even if I don't press a button. Strangely enough, I think that was as easy as that was. So I'm going to save this and let's test out if it works. The way we will have to test this is we will have to put something in the move camera block that we made. In order to move the camera using fungus, we are going to want to go up to tools, fungus, create, and we're going to create a new view. This will be the desired view that we want the camera to move to when we trigger this interactable. I'm going to size it up just like our other view. Maybe I'll make the view go up. And here I'm going to add a new command. It's a camera command and I'm going to make it move to the new view that we made, which is titled view, a very nondescriptive one. And then as always, we're going to want to call our exit block. And uh, I'm just gonna copy this call statement here so I can paste it in here. A handy thing for auto interactables you might get an auto interactable that's more complex than this one. And actually this one will take one whole second. If we want to wait until it's finished moving the view, then we're gonna have a random one second at the edge of the screen where we can't move before we call the exit block. So you can actually put the call exit block in front of whatever you wanna happen in your auto interactable. And instead of the call mode being stop, which means it won't execute anything after the call command here. Instead of stop, we want it to continue. We want it to call the exit block so that we can move again, but we want the camera to move as well. So that's, that's a handy trick for your auto interactables is you can call the exit block so that you can move and still have the auto interactable do something. So let's see if that worked. Let's see if we can still talk to our friend here and we can't move while we're talking. That's good. And we go to our auto interactable and hmm, something is broken. We can't move anymore, even though we called the exit block. So let's see why, why is this? And why, why this happened is that the auto interactable box collider is still active. And that means if we go to our flowchart here, I'm going to minimize this. We will see that it basically is stuck constantly performing this block. If we go to our game view, our box collider 2D trigger is still here. We're still in it. And so it's going to keep trying to run this block over and over and we're not going to be able to move. So we need a function to disable the auto interact once we've auto interacted. We're going to go into our script and it it could be something as simple as when you have an auto interact, you call a function called disable auto interact. And you can call this from fungus in the block that you auto interact with. And you can just put interactable. You can pass in whatever interactable. You'll see what this does in a second. We are going to be able to disable the auto interactability of whatever we so choose at any time in fungus by calling this method. We can even, while we're here, create another method called enable auto interact, and uh, it, it just does the opposite. So if you want an event in your game to set one of your auto interactable things to true, or if you've disabled one and you want it to come back on, in fungus you can call this enable auto interact function. And I will show you how it works. So when we go into our auto interact, First things first, we want to immediately disable the auto interact that we just entered. So we're going to put this invoke method at the top. We're going to drag in our player game object. We are going to access our player script. And there it is. So the first things we're first thing we're going to want to do is disable the auto interact. Now it wants to know because we we asked to pass in an interactable. So it wants to know which interactable we want to disable. And in this case, we want to disable the move camera interactable. So I'm just going to drag it in there. And now this should work. Oops, except I'm in play mode. So it will not have saved any of those changes. Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's see if we can successfully auto interact with something and move again when we're done. Okay, we can move again. 
And we can't move again. It didn't work. Curiouser and curiouser. Okay, you know what I think is happening is I didn't put an else statement here. So when it auto interacts, it's getting hung up in this interact method, perhaps. So let's try this. I'm gonna create an else method and I'm gonna cut and paste in here so that if auto interactable, we automatically interact. And if it's not, then we can do this other thing. So let's see if that solves anything. I'm gonna save and I'm going to try it out again. Can we still do our normal interaction? Yes, we can't move. And now we can. Can we auto interact? We can't move afterwards still. So this hasn't happened to me before, but for some reason, it seems to be calling the exit block, but we're not getting the desired result. We are still being counted as in dialogue and we don't seem to be able to move. The last thing we'll do today is to figure out why this is happening. So I'm gonna go in here and I am going to copy this command and I'm gonna just put it straight in here instead of calling the exit block. Let's see if for some reason it's not calling the exit block like we want it to. No, that's not the problem. So maybe the problem is that um, we are still in the trigger zone. Maybe the problem is with our exit trigger 2D. So I'm just gonna put that back the way it was because if it is broken, you must try and fix it, but just try and change one thing at a time so that you can figure out exactly what's wrong. This could be a problem if we have a trigger that isn't an interactable, that we set the current interactable to null when it's already null. That could be a problem. I'm not sure that's what's doing it here, though. So let's just go ahead and see if for some reason that solves the problem. That doesn't solve the problem, but it was probably still a smart person thing to do. You know, we can still disable the auto interact. We might be running into the problem that we're still in the box collider trigger zone. So I'm gonna go to scripting, set active, and I am going to set this interactable, the whole game object. I'm gonna drag it in here, and I am going to turn it to false, and then hopefully it will set us free. Let's see if that works for your auto interactable feature. That still does not work. Hmm. Okay, this is strange. So it seems like the problem with the auto interact was for some reason the move to view command, which strikes me as very odd. I put in a say command instead of the move to view command and we successfully auto interact. We can't move when we're in dialogue and then we're not in dialogue and we can move again. And this doesn't happen in my version of Unity and Fungus. You know, I, I have a game that uses this exact same script, this exact same system. I often move to view in the game. I also use a camera system that sticks on the player. So I'm not exactly sure why this isn't working with the move to view. Let me see if it likes wait until finished because I had unchecked wait until finished. Okay, it, it was as arbitrary as that. The script liked it. So if you're using a move to view, don't unclick wait until finished. Sometimes you add a fungus command and it is a little bit broken. And if you add the exact same command again, it unbreaks. I have found that to sometimes happen with fungus. This is the very bare bones interaction system, which you could use to just like make a huge amount of things. As you can see, you can move the camera <laughs> with this interact system. You can talk to people. You can automatically talk to people. You can choose to talk to people. You could play an animation once you cross a certain point. If you were going up to a water fountain, you could play the water fountain animation state. You could play a sound effect 
and the water fountain would go. You can, you know, obviously move the camera, shake the camera. You're walking through like a minefield or something and you want to shake the camera. There's an earthquake in your game. You auto interact. You want to shake the camera. There are so many possibilities with fungus. With tweening, you could move an object across the screen with one of these interactable scripts. You can really do quite a lot just with this simple system. And I, I hope it helps. That's it for today. I ran into a few bugs with fungus. I clicked that wait until finished box and it messed everything up. But we figured it out. If you run into any troubles like that, there is a Discord for fungus users, which I will link below. And you can bring any small problems. And there are so many helpful people there, seemingly ready 24-7 to help you out. I don't understand why there is so much kindness and generosity on that Discord, but there does seem to be. It truly is a very robust and flexible system, and it's so easy to learn to use. Like and subscribe, and until the next time, stay jolly.